everyone, it's Melissa from the blog hymnsandhome.com and today I'm going to show you my favorite way to hang and display my vintage plates. If you've been around my channel for a while or over on the blog or my Instagram, then you probably know by now that I have a passion for vintage dishes. I collect them, I research them, and I sell them in my Etsy shop. I also have a passion for educating people about them, especially Ironstone. I recently did an all about Ironstone video, which you can find on my channel here. Even though I have a lot of vintage dishes in my house, I never use them for food. And I'll actually cover that. So I never use my vintage dishes for food just because of safety concerns, health concerns. And I'll cover that in another video. <laughs> And I'll cover that in another video soon that I plan to do. But I also love to display them in my home. I have some in my china hutch, I have some on my sideboard, and I have quite a few of them hanging on my walls. So when it comes to hanging dishes, especially vintage dishes, which might be rare and you might be nervous about them falling off the walls, I have a way of hanging mine that I feel is really secure and I'm going to show you exactly what I do to hang my dishes on the wall so that I feel comfortable that they're going to stay up there. I'll show you how I measure and I mark things out on the wall. I'll show you my favorite product to use for hanging the dishes. And we're going to work, we're actually going to work on an area of my kitchen that I've been meaning to do for a while. Um, it's the section of wall right above our double window in our kitchen. I used to have a sign there, but I took it down a while ago and I've really been wanting to hang some more of my dishes there. So we're going to work on that little project today and I'll take you along for the ride and show you a few things. Let's get started. First thing I do to hang my vintage plates is to lay out some paper. I like to use recycled paper like newspaper. I gather up all the plates I want to use and lay them out on my paper. Next I take a felt tip pen or a sharpie or something dark and I trace around the outside of each plate. This is going to give us a silhouette of the plate to put on the wall so that it's easier to measure and arrange. I then cut out all of my plate shapes. If you have plates that are similar, but just slightly different, you may want to just write on your paper and label them as to which plate is which. At this point, I lay out my actual plates on the floor to determine the order and the design that I want to make on the wall. After I've determined that, I tape up all of my cutouts on the wall where they should go. Sometimes I measure roughly using my hand and other times I will pull out the tape measure and make sure everything is hung where it should be. Once all of it is up, you can take a step back and look for anything that looks off. Maybe go over it with a tape measure again, make sure everything is centered. This would also be a good time to make sure that all of your thrift store stickers are off your plates. Whoops. And if you're having trouble getting it off because they often are really difficult to get off, just give it a little soak in some warm sudsy water and it will come right off. I like to use this little plastic scraper because it's gentle, but it works really well. My favorite hangers to hang my vintage plates securely are these wire plate hangers by Tripar. You can find them linked below. They have these little hooks on the ends that hold onto the plates. That little pointy part at the top is the top of your hanger. To attach your plate hanger to your plate, you're simply going to put the top two hooks on the top of your plate And then you're going to pull it and gently wrap it around the back of your plate and hook it at the bottom with the bottom two hooks. Making sure that that little V I showed you before is on the top end of your plate. We're looking at the back of the plate right now. When you're choosing a plate hanger, you want to pick one that's just slightly smaller than your plate so it can hug it tightly. You don't want it to be loose. If the plate hanger is not sitting quite right on your plate, you can take some pliers 
and gently adjust the hooks on the plate hanger. And be sure not to get rid of that little baggie that came with it because that includes your hanger and your nail. It's basically a picture hanger. Next, you're going to measure the back of your plate. You wanna measure from the top to that little arched wire section. That's gonna tell you how far down you need to put your nail. Keeping that measurement in mind, we're now going to find the center of each plate horizontally. And then we're gonna take that number we just found down from the top of the plate, and we're gonna measure down on our newspaper and make a little mark. That's where your nail needs to go to hang your plate. I just put a little dot with a felt tip pen. You can certainly do this step before you hang these up on the wall, if that's easier for you. This is just the way I chose to do it. Once you have your dot in place, you're going to take your little nail and hanger that came with the set, and you're going to hammer it into the wall right over that dot, right on top of the newspaper. Once it's in place, you can simply rip away the newspaper all around it and it comes off really easily. And you're left with a perfectly placed hanger for your plate. You can go ahead and test your plate on the hanger to see if you like how it looks and it's hanging properly. But if you have other plates to hang on the same wall, I suggest waiting to hang your plate until you have all of your nails in just to avoid any hammer accidents and Avoid vibrating the wall too much. You don't want to rattle your plates around. Just keep going until you have all of your hangers up for all of your plates. It's really that simple. I hope you found this video helpful and that it gives you the confidence to hang and display and enjoy your own dishes on the wall. If you have any questions, please drop them below. I'll do my best to answer them. You can find the written version of this little tutorial over on my blog, I've linked it below. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe for more cottage living and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.